Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC and today I'll be showing you how to replace the CV boots on a UTV CV axle. CV boots are what protect and retain the grease inside of our CV axles and like many components on our UTVs and ATVs they can begin to wear out over time and they will begin to crack or tear. Now once the boot that protects the CV's joint has torn you will want to replace it sooner than later as it can lead to further damage on your machine with that joint now exposed to the element. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on these and inspect them as often as possible. So today we're going to show you how to replace the CV boots off of a Polaris UTV CV axle. Now the process that we're going to show you here today can be applied to many UTVs and ATVs with CV axles. Now as far as tools go, you'll just need some basic hand tools. Here we've got a hammer, a pick, some pliers, some snap ring pliers, and a couple tools here from Tusk. We've got our CV boot banding tool as well as the CV boot band cutters. You will want to have some rubber gloves, safety glasses, rags, and as well some contact cleaner. As far as replacement parts are concerned, we do offer a wide variety to choose from on our website. We've got everything from OEM to aftermarket. For today's video, we're going to be using the All Balls CV Boot Replacement Kit. Now these do come sold individually, so when you pick yourself some up, be sure to grab an inboard as well as an outboard. To begin, remove your CV axle from your UTV or ATV. Then we can take and place the inboard side joint into our vise with soft jaws. And once we've got the axle secured in the vise, we're going to take our CV boot banding cutters. We're going to cut off both of our CV boot bands. Now once you get the CV boot out of the way, you want to inspect the inside of the joint here for any type of dirt or water contamination. If you have any of that present inside of the joint, Polaris recommends that you go ahead and replace the entire joint assembly. Then we can take a rag, we're going to pull up on the joint, and we're going to remove as much of the excess grease as possible. Then we can take our pick tool. Now on the inner diameter here at the top of the plunging joint, we've got a snap ring that sits inside of here. Then we can remove the axle from the plunging joint, remove the plunging joint from the vise. Then we can place our axle back into the vise. Wipe off excessive grease. Next we have a snap ring that retains the racing cage onto the shaft. We'll take our snap ring pliers, remove the snap ring, then we can remove the racing cage. Now real quick, I do want to point out that there is an orientation to this assembly. The larger diameter is going to face towards the inboard part of the axle, while the smaller diameter is going to be facing towards the outboard joint. Now Polaris again does not recommend that we disassemble the racing cage any further as these parts do develop specific characteristics as they wear, so we don't want to disassemble that any further. With our racing cage removed from the axle shaft, we can now remove the CV boot. Then we're going to flip our axle around to the other side. We take our CV boot band cutting tool. We can cut the CV boot band. We can pull down on the CV boot, pull it away from the joint. Take a rag and remove as much of the excess grease as you can. Now even if your outboard boot is the only one that is damaged, Polaris highly advises against disassembling the outboard joint here. Inside of there we've got a circlip and in order to disassemble the joint, you do have to strike it pretty hard with the hammer in order to disassemble it and you run the risk of damaging some of the components in there because they are precision fitted as well. They develop their own characteristic wear pattern. So again, even if this is the only one damaged, do not disassemble this end of the joint just disassemble the inboard, which is easiest, and you won't run the risk of damaging your axle. All right, so now we can flip this around so that we can remove the boot. Then we can take a rag, we can clean off all the excess grease that we can. All right, so now that we've got our CV boots removed, we can go through and clean all the components. So clean up the plunging joint as well as the race and cage and the outboard joint. Now for this, I'm just gonna be using some contact cleaner and after you get all the grease out and everything clean, be sure to let it dry completely before you start the reassembly process. Now when it comes to cleaning the racing cage, you do not want to disassemble it any further than what we have shown here. If you are to lose any of the ball bearings, be sure that you can identify where it came from, put it back in its location as this component does develop its own specific characteristic wear patterns. All right, so once we get all of our parts cleaned, we want to give them a good inspection to make sure that they're in good shape still. Now when it comes to inspecting the racing cage, you just want to look for any type of galling any severe damage. If there's anything wrong with it, it's definitely going to jump out at you and you will see it. Also be sure to inspect this cage here for cracks. If it's cracked, you're definitely going to want to replace this assembly. 
Also inspect your plunging joint for wear as well. Check your snap ring and circlip to make sure that these are in good shape. If they're bent or damaged in any way, you will want to replace them. And Polaris also recommends that once we remove one of these snap rings to go ahead and replace it. Now when it comes to inspecting this joint, again, you're wanting to look for any type of galling, especially if there's been any water damage or dirt that got inside of your CV boot. If that's the case, again, Polaris recommends replacing the assembly. Now on the all-ball CV boots, there is a difference between the inner and the outer CV boot. Now on the inner boot, we've got three distinct ribs. On the outer, we've got four distinct ribs. And if you're still having some difficulties, you can always match up the part number with our website to tell if you have a rear inner or a rear outer CV boot. Now we're gonna take our outer CV boot. We're gonna place it onto our shaft. We're gonna bring it down to about here. Next, we can take the axle grease. Now, in each kit, it's gonna come with a predetermined amount of axle grease. So once we put this in here, you wanna make sure that you get all of the contents that are inside of the packet inside of the joint. Start by filling the joint with as much grease as you can. And once you get enough grease on there, you kinda of wanna work it down into the joint with your fingers to make sure that it makes it through to the other side. All right, so once you've worked the grease through the joint, we're gonna take and empty the rest of the grease packet's contents into the joint. So once you get the contents of the grease package onto the joint, we're gonna take and clean up these areas here where the bands are gonna secure the boot to the outer diameter of our joint. We're gonna clean up this landing right here as well as the smaller diameter landing. All right, so once we've got that cleaned up, we can slide the boot down into place. And when you're sliding the boot into place, you wanna be real careful that you don't push any grease that might make its way into the landing where the boot band will sit. So just be aware of that. Want the smaller diameter to sit down in its groove on the axle shaft. All right, so once we get the boot in place, we're gonna take it out of our vise and set it down on the table. All right, so now we can grab our bands here. Now you're gonna have two different ones, a larger one and a smaller one. Obviously the larger one will go on the larger diameter. Now when installing the bands onto the CV boot, you wanna be mindful of the axle's rotation and which part of the machine it came from. So this is our driver rear, so our axle is gonna be rotating in this direction. Now we want to be aware of that because once we get this installed onto the CV axle, we wanna make sure that we bend the tail of the bending clap back on itself that's opposite the direction of the axle's rotation. This way we can ensure that it doesn't have a sharp edge, like if we were to install it backwards, that it's gonna get snagged on and rip itself off up on like an object, a rock or a branch. Double check to make sure that the boot is fully on to the joint here on the outer diameter. Make sure that it's looking good. Then we can take our CV boot banding tool. It's got an opening here at the tip of it. We're gonna slide the tail in through there. And then this part right here that rotates, it's got a slot cut down the center of it and we're gonna place the tail of the band in the center slot just like that. Once we've got it set up in this position, we can begin to rotate it, and this is going to cinch down the CV band onto the boot. Now, while you're doing this, you wanna pay extra careful attention to the band to make sure that it seats in the rubber channel on the CV boot. Okay, they're gonna rotate this a little more to secure it. Now, you don't wanna crank on this thing like super tight, just enough to secure the boot to the outer diameter. Once you get it on there tight, we're gonna bend it back on itself, then we can begin to remove the tool. We take our banding cutters, cut it about here. We can take our hammer, just kind of crease this edge that we folded it back in on itself, just right lightly, not, don't hit it too hard. We'll take our pliers. We're gonna grab both of these tabs and fold them in on each other. Lightly tap on them with a hammer. Take your banding cutters and trim off the excess tail so that you have maybe about an inch left. We're gonna trim off the corners. Just kind of tap on the tail to make sure it stays down and out of the way. Now we're gonna repeat the same process for the smaller diameter, but first we need to equalize the pressure that's inside of here. So we're gonna take our small pick tool. You can use a small flat screwdriver if you want. We're gonna slide this underneath the boot. Then we're just gonna kind of lift up on it. And this way we can equalize the pressure inside of there. All right, so once you've done that, we can now install the other band.
So now that we're done and finished up with the outboard side, we can now take the inboard CV boot. We can place it onto our axle shaft with the small diameter first. We're gonna slide this all the way down the shaft until it touches the other boot. Now before we install the racing cage, we're gonna take just a little bit of our CV grease here. We're gonna coat the splines on the shaft. All right, then we can take our race and cage. Remember the smaller diameter is gonna to face towards the center of the axle and the larger diameter is gonna to face towards the joint itself, the plunging joint. Take the snap ring with snap ring pliers, install it, give it a good inspection to make sure that it's fully seated. Then we can pull our axle out of the vise. You can place the plunging joint end back into the vise. Take some grease, we're gonna coat the inside of the plunging joint. We can take the axle shaft, place it into the plunging joint. We can install our circlip. Make sure that it snaps into place and give it a good inspection to make sure that it's fully seated. Then we can take the remainder of our grease and fill the plunging joint. Put the grease package's contents emptied entirely into the joint. Move the joint in and out several times. Work it around in circles to make sure that the grease is distributedly throughout the entire racing cage and the joint itself. So now we're ready to bring the CV boot down and connect it to the plunging joint. Before we do that, we're gonna take some contact cleaner, spray it onto our rag. We're gonna clean up the channel where the CV boot band will sit. We wanna we want make sure that there's no grease in here. We'll do the same for the smaller channel as well. We can slide the CV boot down into place. Now when you're sliding it onto the outer diameter of the plunging joint, we want to make sure that no grease gets in between the boot and where the CV band secures to it. So once we have it to there, we can pull, pull it out of the vise and set it on the table and secure the bands. Now before we install the smaller diameter band, we need to equalize the pressure inside of the joint here. Now to do that, we're gonna take our pick tool, we're going to insert it in between the axle and the boot, being mindful not to damage the boot. We need to create a gap between that fitting and then we're gonna pull out on the plunging joint all the way. And this is gonna equalize the pressure inside. So basically you wanna equalize the pressure with the CV axle and the position that it's gonna be in for the longest period of time. So we're gonna pull out on it, equalize the pressure, and then we can secure the last band. And that's it. That's all there is to it when it comes to replacing the CV boots on your CV axles. Now, if you have any questions as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave us a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how to's and top fives. And also see our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com where we have the largest selection of parts, apparel and accessories for your motorcycle, ATV and side by side. Thanks for watching. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Keep turning those wrenches.